Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Let's talk about what your camshaft choice means when you get to this stage of your build. That means you have it assembled, you're ready to pre-lube it, and you're getting ready to either start it up and break it in or dyno test it. Now you wouldn't think that your cam choice has anything to do with getting ready to break in your engine or getting ready to, to uh, pre-lube it, but it does. And in order to understand that, let's first talk about the two different kinds of cam, your roller and your flat tappet. And when you're choosing your cam at the beginning of your project, you have to think long term, specifically break in. Roller doesn't have to be broken in, flat tappet has to be broken in. And the reason for that is all in the geometry of the camshaft and the lifters. First, let me dispel a myth. A roller cam is not going to give you more horsepower. Because a roller cam has a roller on the bottom, it just has less resistance to turn or less resistance to move than a flat tappet. So it doesn't add horsepower, it just takes away less when it's operating. The flat tappet runs on friction, so it's directly in contact with the cam. That offers resistance and that takes away a little more horsepower than a roller would. And the lobes on the camshaft are ground flat. That's kind of strange because a flat tappet cam is not flat. The lobes are ground on an angle, whereas a roller cam, the lobes on the cam are actually flat. Now since the roller is the only thing that comes in contact with the lobe on the camshaft, you can have a much more aggressive profile on your camshaft. That means you can open the valve faster and close it faster and hold it open a little longer. The flat tappet lifters are always in contact with the cam and they don't touch in the middle and the flat tappet cam is ground on an angle. The lifter on the bottom is also not flat. Even though it's a flat tappet cam, the lifters are not flat. There's a little crown in the center. And the, the lifter rides about two thirds of the way up the lobe. And as the cam is turning around, the lifter is riding on the edge. That's what makes the lifter rotate in the lifter bore. That's what keeps it all moving. So why would you choose a flat tappet cam over a roller cam. Now, these big blocks, especially these Mopars, they are pretty noisy engines. If you open it up, sometimes I hear people open their hood and, and, and it sounds like there's a bunch of ball bearings rolling around in the engine because they can get pretty noisy. Uh, big block uh, Mopar, the Chevy 454s, 427s, um, even some of the big block Fords are, can be kind of noisy on the inside. The, the flat tappet, will be a lot quieter than a roller. The roller has all those moving parts in there. More, more, more moving parts means noise. And the roller engine is gonna be a lot more noisy than a flat tappet. So if your goal is to have a, a, a solid performing engine, you want it to run quieter, choose a flat tappet cam. This is the point where I will join the engineering and the practical knowledge together and what it means when you're at this point of the build. I get to talk to a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of engine builders, a lot of dyno guys, a lot of engine builders who are dyno guys, and they have a lot of practical knowledge, decades of knowledge that you, it takes decades to learn because they've been doing it forever. And uh, one of the guys I get to talk to is a pro mod, he's a national champion, he builds $150,000 engines, genius when it comes to engines. Uh, another guy I know has been building engines all his life. Just, I, I'm lucky to get to talk to these guys because I get to get that practical knowledge, which is they run these engines, they know what works, they know uh, what to do and what not to do. I come in with the engineering perspective and I ask questions. They have a failure and I want to understand the failure from uh, more than just, hey, that didn't work. I want to know why it didn't work and what you have to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, from all the engines that I've built over decades and all of the engines, the guys I know have built engines over the decades, I would say, I'm not gonna say 100%, but there is probably close to 99% success rate with roller cams. That means you're getting ready to pre-lube your engine, you're getting ready to dyno test it, you don't have to worry about any special break-in fluids. You don't have to worry about any break-in temperatures, break-in, you don't have to worry about any break-in. You put a roller cam in with roller lifters, 
even if you have roller rockers, you put that together, you put it on a dyno, you're gonna start it up, it's gonna run, you don't have to break it in, you let it heat up, you do some fine tuning, change some jets, carburation, whatever it is, you do three, four pulls, and you're done. That's the nice thing about the roller cam and the roller uh, lifters. So that's the advantage there. Flat tap it. Now, flat tap it is different because the lifter that is touching the camshaft has got to be broken in. And it takes some special chemistry and temperature in order to make that happen. That's why I, I don't have it handy, but when you buy a cam, uh, they're, they're going to recommend a lube, uh, a break-in lube. And that break-in lube is going to have zinc and phosphorus in it. The zinc and phosphorus are important because they act as lubricants and as the engine heats up and as the cam heats up, it work hardens the surface to make sure that, number one, it doesn't wear prematurely, the, the cam doesn't wear prematurely, and it hardens and shapes the bottom of the lifter to make sure those don't fail prematurely. If you don't break it in right, and by break in, believe it or not, the first for, for a flat tappet engine, the first five to ten seconds of the engine running is where the engine will see 95% of its wear. Almost all of the wear occurs in the first five to ten seconds because there is no lubrication. All you have is some leftover lubrication from when you shut it off. And when you go to start it back up, the oil pressure has to build up, the oil has to get distributed throughout the engine, and it has to lubricate those parts. So for the first five or ten seconds, that's when most of the damage is done. With a roller, you don't have to worry about that because the parts are rolling and moving. Lubrication isn't as, is not as important. So that's one of the big differences for, for, for a, a flat tap at the first five to ten seconds is where you have most of the wear. For a roller, I bet you it's maybe one to three seconds. It doesn't last that long, so roller does have that advantage. The big difference at break-in for a flat tappet is you have to start the engine and you have to get it running and keep it running immediately. You have to start it up and get it up to 2,500 RPMs or so, maybe 22 to 2,500, and you have to hold it there for 30 minutes. As the engine heats up, the zinc and the phosphorus act as lubricants. The cam and the lifters work together. They work hard, and that's how it gets broken in. That's the, the critical point right here. Now, what that means is if you go to start it, let's say you go to start it up for the first time, you have a new engine, you're going to break it in, you're going to a dyno test or whatever it is. Let's say you go to start it and it doesn't start right away. It, it fumbles, something's not right, and you keep turning it over and it's firing. You might rotate that engine 500, 1,000, maybe 2,000 times. You have just rotated that engine and the, the cam and the lifters. And since there hasn't been a ton of lubrication going on because it hasn't really run yet, you haven't built up oil pressure, there will be a lot of wear on a flat tappet cam. And that is where most flat tappet break-ins fail. The engine doesn't start right away. There's not enough lubrication there. You go over and over and over and over and you get a, uh, dry spots on the cam or the lifter and that's where wear starts. And then when you finally get it started, the, the metals are soft, and even with the zinc and phosphorus in your braking fluid or in the pen grade, I use pen grade oil that has zinc in it, it's just not enough, and that's when the cam fails. Now this is what happens when you wipe out a flat tappet camshaft. You start it up, and initially, the lifter is riding about two-thirds of the way up the lifter surface, okay? It's riding about two-thirds. What happens is the angle, so you got your flat, right, and there's an angle on the lifter lobe and you have the lifter is rotating and the lobe on the cam is on an angle. As you start it up, the spring force is, is hammering that lifter down on the camshaft. And as it's doing that, it's, it starts to hammer down the flat part and instead of the lifter riding in the center where it's supposed to, it starts to ride up, 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 and it gets to the edge and it starts to hammer down the high spot of the camshaft. As it hammers down, you can imagine this, this uh, angle like this, as it starts to hammer down here, it starts to, to wear out the camshaft like that, and it gets to a point where the center of the lifter is now touching the center of the camshaft lobe and it's not spinning around anymore. And if it's not spinning around anymore, it's riding on the same spot, and that's what leads to a wiped out camshaft and totally wiped out lifters. Now, unfortunately, 
because of that and because of the difficulties breaking in, starting with the new camshaft, a new engine, getting it started. I, I spoke with all my guys about it and we, I, I took a survey and said, what do you guys think? And the success rate, or let's say the failure rate, either or, if you're running a flat tappet cam, you got a 50-50 shot. You build 100 engines with flat tappet cams, 50 of them are gonna fail, you're gonna wipe out the cam. That's just the nature of the beast, that's the way it works, but I wanna to explain to you why that happens and what you can do to prevent it or help yourself out. Now I've had the opportunity to speak with a lot of engineers, a lot of dyno guys, engine guys, and this is what happens. The average camshaft, Comcams, Crane, Crawler, Edelbrock, Lunati, those cams, they're all uh, machine the same way and if you can imagine the the angle on the camshaft let's say from one side to the other if you were to measure it it probably is about three thousandths bigger on one side than the other that's the angle let's let just for sake of argument let's say it's three degrees they all grind their camshafts at three degrees and what ends up happening is when you start it and you have a flat tap it as it's starting to break in it's going to push down that angle and that three degrees or three thousandths of an inch, whatever you want to call it, is now going to go down to two and a half, two, one and a half. So you start at that three and it might finish at one and a half. And at one and a half, it's not enough angle to keep the lifter rotating. The camshaft gets wiped out. The only difference is, believe it or not, it's the manufacturer. Now, ISKI cams are different. ISKI cams grind, to use numbers differently, if all those other cams are grown at three, they grind at five. There'll be a five thousandths difference or five degrees, whatever you want to call it. They just put more of an angle on their lobes. That way, when you first start it up and it starts at five, it's going to settle and it'll settle at three versus starting at three and settling at one. Big difference. Now, I'm not being paid by ISKI cams. I am in no way connected to them. I'm just telling you the experience I've had with talking with builders, the engineers, people who actually work for ISKI, and people who in the industry who know the difference. So that's the big difference between the two. Roller, less, less resistance, more aggressive profiles, gonna be a little noisy, a little more noisy in a big block engine. Flat tap it, quieter, uh, and it will run, uh, can run, they can run a long time, now remember, uh, flat tappet cams have been around for a hundred years. It's not like it's a uh, bad technology. They millions of engines a year were built built with flat tappet cams, and they're still running. So it's they're not bad. I'm not trying to paint them as bad. I'm just saying that when you do this, you have to be careful. And if you want to increase your chances, what you need to do. Now that's where we come to this point with breaking. I'm getting ready to. Uh, I need to. I need to uh, pre lube this engine and get it ready for uh, dyno testing before I put the intake manifold on, valve covers, button up, get ready to go. Now, I, I, I was talking to a couple of my dyno guys and um, in the instruction book for the comp lifters, it says do not, do not pump, pump up the lifters before running it. I don't know, yeah, Frank's snoring in the background there. I don't know why they say that. So I went and talked to one of my dyno guys. I said, hey, you know, I'm going to bring you this 440. We're going to dyno test it. Do you want it pre-lubed? He said, absolutely pre-lube it. I said, it's flat tap with comp lifters. They say, don't pre-lube it. And he said, don't worry about that. He goes, you got to have it pre-lubed. You got to make sure that everything is working properly. Uh, uh, make sure that there's oil to the top of the engine. Now, I get phone calls from and text messages, emails uh, from a lot of people who are building 440s where they have run into problems where they're only getting oil to one head or n neither. They don't get any oil to the top of the engine because the engine has to be rotating for this oil to make its way up to the surface. And sometimes they do, they make mistakes and the engine, the oil, engine oil doesn't get to the top. You want to make sure that there's oil to the top of the engine and you have oil pressure before you even put it on a dyno because you just dump 500 bucks to find out you don't have oil pressure. Now there's a couple ways to do it. Um, but I have, there's a variety of tools depending on the engine. Ford has a special tool that has a big um, keyway in it that fits around the push rod or goes right into the oil pump. 
Uh, same thing with Chevy. I have some longer tools for Chevy. Goes around some of the push rods. Uh, for this engine, this one right here is simply a an Allen key that I welded to a really long steel rod that allows me to insert this in the engine and hold the drill and allows me to rotate the oil pump. Now the important thing for you to understand when you're going to be breaking in or, or priming your engine is which way does the oil pump turn? Because while the engine on here uh, rotates clockwise, the oil pump rotates counterclockwise, which means when you put a drill on there to prime your engine, you have to run it in reverse. And you don't want to run it too long because I'll tell you, it takes quite a bit to turn an oil pump, especially when you're pushing, trying to push 60 or, 60 or 80 PSI through an engine. And if you're using an electric hand drill and you have it in reverse, it will get really hot fast if you don't burn it out. So you want to make sure you're doing it. Have some help, have someone turn it, make sure you have pressure, and then uh, rotate it while you're doing it. So this is the way I start. With piston number one at top dead center, I put this tool in and I rotate the engine just to make sure I have oil pressure. Now, while you are turning the oil pump, you're gonna to have to turn over the engine. And if you're rotating the engine clockwise, the right bank, I'm sorry, well, right bank the way you're looking at it, but the left bank or the left side of the engine is going to get oil first. So you wanna take your engine and kind of tilt it this way a little bit. You want this head to be pointing up a little bit because once this starts flowing, you'll fill up your cylinder head with oil. It'll be gushing all over the place. So lift it up and, and then start rotating your engine very slow. Look at the back of the engine first because that's where the oil is going to start to come out and keep turning your drill motor and pumping oil until you see it coming out the front and it's coming out consistently. Once you have that done, Take the engine, tilt it the other way, wait for the oil to drain back, tilt the engine this way a little bit, and then do the same thing. Pump it, look in the back, make sure it's gonna, it's gonna start from the back, right about here. You'll, in, the, uh, in the back, you'll see it start flowing out, it'll work its way up to the front. And once you have oil through all of the journals, uh, uh, for all of the, uh, the rocker shafts, once you see oil through the whole head, you're all done, just stop priming right there. Now, one last thing about the break-in, if you're using a flat tappet cam. After your initial startup, you're going to run it for 30 minutes. It's going to get hot, and if everything works out fine, you got to stop, let the engine cool down, and you're going to have to change the oil. Change the oil before you do any tuning. So it's going to require twice the amount of oil. A little expensive there, but no big deal. Uh, I always use Wix filters. Wix filters, I think, are the best for this. And like I said, I use the pen grade oil that has the zinc in it. Now, uh, when you're done with your... Uh, when you're done with your priming and you're done getting everything all set, just let the engine sit, uh, let the oil all drain back, and make sure that it doesn't collect anywhere, it doesn't pool anywhere, because it can happen. If, if there's a blocked drain hole, if something isn't set up right, you could end up with a lot of uh, oil in the cylinder head or in the valve cover, and it will get by the, the seals inside the valve seals, and it'll start to burn oil. So you're just looking to make sure the oil drains back properly. So that is how your cam choice is going to affect pre-lubing and is going to affect your break-in procedure. We'll get to that when we get to the dyno, but don't be afraid to use a flat tappet cam. If you want a nice quiet engine, flat tappet is the way to go. If you're trying to do something different and you just want a roller and you want to avoid having to do lash adjustments as often, then roller is the way to go. It's all up to what you're trying to accomplish, so don't be afraid of either. They're both good, and I'm looking forward to get this running. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.